If you're not a player for the Blazers, uh, you kind of feel like an alien. You know, people who are not people of color or uh, not African-American, they kind of want to know, what are you doing here? You know, are you new here? You know, do you own a house here? Do you work here? And it's kind of uncomfortable because you feel as if people are probing you as if you don't deserve to live uh, in, in that neighborhood or in this community. Justice Rogers came to LO from Southern California. It's his fiance's hometown. U.S. Census numbers show in Lake Oswego less than 1% of the population is black. That translates to about 300 people out of the 40,000 people living here. As a black man I'm living in an area like Lake Oswego, you know, there are certain things that other people can do that I can't do. Like, I can't go jogging at night. You know, I can't, you know, wear a hood over my head, you know, if it's dark or the sun's going down because now people are thinking you're suspicious. You know, I have to be uh, very vocal and open when I walk into, you know, a convenience store so that people are aware that I'm not here to rob the place. Willie Poinsett has lived in Lake Oswego more than 30 years. She raised a son here and is one of the founders of the group Respond to Racism in LO. It formed three years ago to get people together to talk about the topic. The letter sent to a family with a sign in support of the Black Lives Matter movement highlights the need for more conversation. The letter that triggered, that brought Lake Oswego to the, to the front again, um, is just something that we're dealing with. This is all kinds of things that may happen, but we're steady. We're saying, not in this city, we're not gonna just let it go. People of color in LO, she says, are sometimes treated with suspicion. Sometimes they're curious and sometimes they're scared. Okay, all right? I wanna be quite honest. They're scared, so they wondered whether or not you're gonna come and rob their house or why are you walking around? A documentary which features Poinsett gives the history of exclusion in Lake Oswego and the state of Oregon. It points out a time when blacks were not allowed to live in the city. And so this town was a little town that rich doctors and lawyers and people had their little summer cottages here. And they um, would have black people come and do domestic work you know, those kinds of things. But by sundown, you had to be out of this town. Poinsett and Rogers say while that history is still felt today, there's an effort to make the city more inclusive and there's a hope more people of color will make it home. I encourage it uh, because that's the only way that people are going to get comfortable is the more they get to interact uh, with people of color, with black people, with African-American people is when they're around you. And I think some people are possibly unknowingly ignorant. You know, they, they don't want to be that way, but just because they're not too familiar uh, with the culture and things like that. All right, Bryant Clerkley is joining us now. And Bryant, I mean, you and I talked on the phone and I told you, and, and we've been talking about it in the newsroom, I think your story was so well done and it's so important. Um, and you, you told some of our colleagues that you had never done a story like this. Right. Yeah, Maggie, that's that's right. Um, a story focusing on sort of the microaggressions that people of color get every day is unlike anything I've ever done. Um, most of the time I, I feel in my career when I've done stories focused on the black community, it has something to do with crime. But this had nothing to really do with crime. It was just about living in a place, uh, existing as a person of color and the issues that um, we face sometimes. So I actually got to take a deep dive into people's lives that live in a community that I didn't really know that much about before I started researching it. Um, and, you know, everything sort of came together like that. So, yeah, this was definitely a new topic for me. Yeah, well, we're, I mean, we're so glad that you dove into it and you just kind of touched on it. Uh, you are new to KGW and new to the Portland market. I mean, for those who are sitting at home and and they uh, they're wondering, who's this guy? This is Bryant Clarkley. He's one of our newest reporters. You started here. Uh, you told me June 1st came across the country from Florida. And we're so glad you're here. 
Um, I want to make sure people at home know, like when a reporter lands and we've all done it, when you land in a new market, it's really hard to find stories and to find sources. So I'm curious how you found the voices that you did for this story. And then what what was their reaction to being asked to talk about the black experience in, in Lake Oswego? What did they think of that? Yeah, um, the voice, you're right. It is very difficult to um, find voices and find sources and connections when you first move to a new city. So I did some social media research. Um, so once the, the story about the anonymous letter was posted on our Twitter page, the anonymous letter that the family got about their sign supporting Black Lives Matter, um, one of the, the people in my story, Justice, he was really opinionated on that and was commenting. So I just sent him a message on Twitter and that's how I found him. And he was really excited about doing the interview because we don't cover a lot of stories or, you know, he has not seen a lot of stories about uh, microaggressions or uh, the things that he faces as a black man on, on, on an everyday basis. And then Willie Point Set, she has a group called Respond to Racism in LO and they have an Instagram page. And that is how I got in touch with her. And like Justice, uh, she was very happy to do the story because, uh, you know, she doesn't feel like her voice has been amplified over the past 30 years she's lived in Lake Oswego. And she had a lot to say about her experiences. Yeah, they definitely did. Well, I mean, Brian, thank you again so much. We think this story was really valuable, really important. Great job, man. I'm just so excited that you're here and you're doing the work that you're doing. So Brian Clerkley, thank you. Thank you so much, Maggie. I really appreciate it.